going to start out with the 2005 Silverado. It's a six liter U engine. It's uh, one of these deals where the driver has uh, decided to do a, a bit of modification, lifting it, chipping it, and exhausting it, cool air intake, you know, the whole nine yards. But he's got, you know, it's not running like he wants it to, and he's looking for help. Customer complaint is the check engine light comes on when I pull a trailer for a long distance. It's not on right now. When it does come on, the truck's exhaust note sounds different. So we make some observations on the vehicle, and we see we have a DTC P0101 MAF performance, about 482 miles since the first time and 86 since the last time it's set. The freeze frame for the 101 is was 1,200 RPM, 34% load, 59% throttle, 43 miles an hour. And the most uh, telling item here is you're at plus 20 total fuel trim on both banks. In the shop, he can bang the throttle and hit 44% calculated load, which is not bad. The engine, however, revs past 6,000 RPM, which is a little nerve-wracking. Uh, this truck's been chipped, so it, who knows if they took the rev limiter out. Uh, the fuel trims are about 20% plus, both idle and about 2,500 RPM, and there are no vacuums. The uh, DTC P0101, the way it, the code says, is it tests for signals outside of normal range, but it also compares actual MAF output to calculated values. These calculated values are based on MAP, RPM, throttle position, and IAT. The point I want to make here is that because you're doing a cross-check that can set the code, that now you have to be a little bit suspicious of the other sensors involved in the cross-check, such as the MAP sensor. The throttle position sensor, or RPM, you know, we got to figure that's probably a pretty good number. Throttle position, again, this is electronic throttle control, so that's probably a good number. IET, well, you know, maybe that uh, sensor didn't find a home uh, in the new cool air cleaner box thingy that the guy put on, so we might want to go find out where the IET is hanging. Well, we've got a biometric efficiency road test here, good hard pull. We get uh, vehicle shifts at about 45 miles an hour there. Uh, the mass airflow sensor pumping at about 205 grams per second, and the APP is at 100%. We did, uh, he did several polls. What, this is the best one. So here we go to the website. We go in, uh, log in, go, click on technician toolbox. We go into calculators, and we go to the volumetric efficiency. We put in our, our data and we come up with a biometric efficiency on this vehicle of 68%. Well, when he gives a little visual inspection, uh, he wants to see if the map is dirty. The map is not dirty, but then he finds this critter in the hose that goes right to the ma mass airflow sensor. The device is disrupting the flow of air through the mass airflow sensor, which relies on a sample to collect data about the amount of air going through. So the device is removed and a second test drive is performed this time around, we get about 250 grams per second out of our mass airflow sensor. We get a bit more engine RPM when we get to the shift point. And at this point, we got 89% VE. That's looking pretty good. We can bring up the general rule here that engine liters times 40 equals grams per second at wide open throttle. So if we did the uh, calculation on this one, it would have been 6 times 40, 240. That's pretty close to what we got, and that should be considered the minimum for wide open throttle. So the technician says, let's take the device out. By the way, he has a performance mass airflow. Recommends the guy put the stock type in, reset the fuel trim. The guy goes for it, and after he's done, it runs well, no problem. So we remove the device, and everybody's happy.